All right, welcome back to CAD Tutorials on Revit 2012. Um, let's start the mentioning this thing. It's going to be our next uh, our next video that we're doing. So, Revit offers a few types of dimensions, five types to be exact. They have aligned, linear, angular, radial, and arc length. And under the aligned, there's actually three different types. You can do ordinate, base, and continuous. Aligned dimensions, which you're going to use, I'd say, 75% of the time. So, a cylinder annotate. Oops, let's undo. I want to do that. Annotate. And there's your, there's your five different dimensions. Just like I said. So, under aligned, you can pick what you want to dimension to. I usually keep it on wall faces. And this is a good little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Option. There it is, right here. So if you do individual references, basically what that means is for this window, uh, for example, I'm gonna pick here, and I can pick the center, and it's gonna snap. You can see how it kinda turns purple. You can go center, or you can go opening. Let's just do opening. And here, and as, as long as this dimension's alive, even if I wanted to pick one in the middle here, notice that says 20 foot, one and three eighths. If I pick here now, it automatically fits the dimension and I got 16, one and a quarter. So as long as this dimension string is active, you haven't closed it out, you can keep picking points. And then you put it where you want it and you just click out in a white space somewhere. Or on the, you know, don't click on, a, on an actual object, just click out here, boom, there's your dimension. Now you'll notice this little equal sign, I'll get to that in a second, but there's your dimension and you can hit the modify button, boom, there it is. Another cool thing, say I want to get rid of this dimension. I can just, this is to drag the point. This, it, this little one here, you can say move witness line. I can move it on top of another witness line and that dimension disappears. So now that dimension disappears and I can actually move this dimension to the center and now I've just dimensioned to the center of the window. So that's dimensions, pretty simple. Now if you wanted to add a dimension in here, you edit with this line. So once I pick edit with this line, I can pick here and here and then get rid of that dimension and then pick out here in the open space and that's how I add to a dimension string that's already existing. Because what you don't want to do, say this is gone, and I go to dimension, say if I dimension to here, and I said, oh, you know what, I really want to dimension again. Well, now that I'm starting a new dimension string, now I've got actually two different dimension strings. I've got that one and that one, which isn't horrible, but I just like to keep my strings in a line. I like to keep them all as one, so that's when I would come in here and say, okay, edit witness lines, and I would add the other dimensions. That way, it's all in one string. It's just a little cleaner to me. Personal preference, I suppose, but... Now the other way you could dimension, we'll do it out here, if I went back to aligned and picked entire wall. And then you see this little options button comes up. Go ahead and click on that. I want to dimension my openings and let's dimension the widths. Um, you can dimension intersecting walls and intersecting grids if you want. I don't have any walls. Uh, yeah, I do in the back. So let's do intersecting walls. And then all I have to do is pick this wall. Boom. Everything's dimensioned. Of course it's going to be jumbled because I'm dimensioning everything just to show you, but everything is dimensioned. One click. And once I'm in that command active, it stays until I change it so I can pick these walls, boom, everything's picked. And of course it's picking both faces of walls because that's how we set it up. So we can even change that, not to pick intersecting walls, and there you go. So sometimes that's easier, that's quicker. I mean that's how I would have dimensioned it anyway, I would have dimensioned every opening into the corner. So rather than doing one witness line and picking, even though it's so easy and quick to pick each point in Revit, it kind of highlights it for you, this is even faster. Um, some people like to pull these dimensions out. You can do that. In Revit, you can also, in 2012, it's brand new. Um, let me see if I can remember how to get there. Under additional settings, let's see there's a temporary dimensions. No, it's not gonna be there. Let me just try one more spot. Edit my dimension type. I believe it's here. 
Yeah, there it is, leader type arc. New for 2012, you can do a line. And you can do the shoulder length. I don't know, one inch, set to whatever you want. And now that arc becomes a line. Which that's way too big. I guess I shoulder width is better suited to be zero. We'll get it right here in a second. Maybe a sixteenth. There you go. That's better. So that's new for 2012. You can actually do um, a leader line there instead of just an arc. 2011 and, and and back. Everything was an arc. That was your only. That was your only choice. So basically, that's your linear dimension. Pretty simple. Another thing with linear dimension. These just happen to be all 90 degrees. Here's this angle here. Well. I'm not going to pick the wall to individual references. Linear dimension will dimension anything parallel to something. So I started off on this wall, so anything parallel to that wall, I can dimension. And I can even pick a point. See, that's not a really a wall, it's just a point where those two come together as an intersection. But what I can't do is then pick this wall. See, it's not going to, it's not going to let me, because it's not parallel to that. So just remember, you know, if you're trying to dimension something, it can be off by a tenth of a degree. If it's not parallel, it's not going to pick it up. And then, of course, you can drag these wherever you want. You know, if these are overlapping, you want to put it inside. There you go. If you put it inside, you might want to grab the top line here. That one and pull them up. Pull your witness lines up so you can see a little bit better. And that's it. That's your line dimension. So the next one is going to be your linear dimension. It's pretty much the same thing, except for it's only, as the name states, going to dimension horizontal and vertical. It will not do any sort of an angle. Why would you want that? Well, maybe you want to dimension. Oh, it's not going to let me. From that point. To tab that point. There you go. So it's either going to give me this way or it's going to give me that way. That's it. Those are my only two choices. I very rarely use this one, but sometimes when you do angled stuff like this, you want to, you can see the point turning gray. I'll zoom in real quick. See, there's a point. Oh, that's actually, yes, yeah, point. Oh, I picked the wrong one. No wonder. Linear. From that point to that point. Well, I guess then you will go at an angle as long as it's parallel going to a point. That I did not know. So you learn something new every day. But there's your linear dimension. Uh, your next one is your angular dimension, which is, you know, just like AutoCAD. Got an angle you want to dimension, dimension from there to there, boom, there's your angle dimension. From there to there. Of course, it's always going to give you the acute dimension, it's not going to do the obtuse, so, and that is one deal with a Revit that actually there's a couple threads on some forms about that, but there you go, there's your angular dimension. And again, it's real easy. You just pick angular dimension, and you can pick any, even if it's 90 degrees, you can pick these two. And there it is, 90 degrees. Radial dimension, we don't really have anything circular in here, but let's just go ahead and throw something in there. I could throw in a wall and make it a turret. There you go. Pick my radial dimension. Pick your wall. Whichever face you want, middle, center, and there it is. From that center point, click on it, it's 10 feet. Of course, if I was to make this wall smaller, now it's nine. Of course, when you do a, it's another good thing, when you do a wall, circular wall, it's gonna make two semicircles. So that's why one moved and the other didn't. So I could actually do a real dimension on this one. And you can see it's different. But that's real simple, that's how you do your radial dimensions. Your mark is always going to be there. Of course, you can move your text you know, anywhere out here if you want to. Get rid of that. 
in arc length, last one. I'm just going to do a detail line this time. And we'll draw an arc. Now we'll do the arc length dimension first and look down here for if you don't know what to do remember always look at your line down here select the arc so first you select the arc and then you pick the point and there's your arc dimension depends on what side you hit make sure you get to the right side that's 113 foot 10 and 5 30 seconds along that arc and that's basically it those are your different types of dimensions. Another thing I want to show you, say if I do another overall dimension here, you'll notice, and this is not a glitch, I know it's probably hard to see, as I drag this in it's going to snap, boom, right there to a point. It's going to snap to a point, same point every time. That's so when you do other dimensions and say you know you had a dimension from here to here, and it's going to snap right to that point right there. You set that snap distance in your dimension uh, offsets and your dimension properties, I'm sorry, and that way your dimensions are always lined up, same spacing, no problem. That makes your drawing look real good. So that's something to also keep in mind. Um, within the aligned dimension, there is three types. And for that, let me just do a couple of walls here. Alright, if you come to your line dimension, individual references, you'll notice, sorry, drop this down, and there's a lot of dimensions already put in here, but this is part of the template, and you know what, we're not going to show it to you this way, I was going to show it to you this way. All right, that is continuous dimensioning. Boom, continuous. Now if I change it to baseline, and I can leave this open and just hit apply, you get a baseline dimension. So you can set a dimension style up for baseline dimensioning. And if I set it to ordinate, you will get ordinate dimensioning. Set zero, three foot 11, it just keeps a running total. That starts at zero, this is three foot eleven, and then that's seven foot one. It doesn't tell you the distance in between them, it just gives you a running total of ordinate dimension to do. And you can create your dimension style. This happens to says linear. But if I was to create a new dimension style, and actually we can do that real quick. We'll just come here and actually we'll do another one. And I'm just gonna do a, a continuous dimension. I'm gonna grab that dimension duplicate it and call it what was it baseline and then duplicate that again and call it ordinate okay change that to ordinate and then you can see the different types see there's ordinate I can come here and go baseline boom there's baseline and if I was to dimension baseline I still just click the points uh, I'm in ordinate sorry baseline okay I still just click the points like normal but that's gonna be the first one and the second one's gonna baseline it and the third line again so that's how you do your baseline dimensions really simple way easier than AutoCAD so there's your dimensions um, Got one more thing to show you in dimensions, uh, actually a couple more things, and we'll do that in the next video. And I just threw these dimensions in real fast. We can go ahead and in the next video at the beginning, we'll clean it up a little bit and make them look a little better. So join us for the next video, and thanks for joining us for this one. See you next time.